please welcome Christian Drapeau. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. It is such a pleasure to be in Malaysia. You know, I've come to Malaysia many times in the past. It's actually almost my second home. So to be able to do this reveal of Revita Blue in Malaysia is, is just beyond belief. So this is really, really great. You may not know, or maybe some of you know, the amount of work and dedication that went behind not only the development of Revita Blue, but to bring it here in Malaysia first. So you have an absolutely awesome team here with your Jeunesse Global in Malaysia. So really a good hand for them. <clears throat> when we do, oh, oftentimes, when uh, we make a scientific discovery, it is first received with resistance. Then over time, some people start to see that there's some good common sense to this discovery, and they start to study it. They put it to the test. And this whole process can take 5, 10, 15 years, at the end of which all the studies and all the tests either uh, prove or demonstrate that the idea is not correct, or it proves that the concept is real. And then it becomes reality, and that's when you normally hear about it as being a discovery in the news, in the magazines. And the reason why I'm saying this is that 15 years ago, uh, a colleague of mine, Dr. Gita Jensen, and I made a discovery. Uh, we proposed a new concept. We published this in a journal called Medical Hypotheses. And in essence, what we proposed was that just like the human body has an endocrine system, a nervous system, a cardiovascular system, an immune system, the body also has a repair and renewal system. It was a wild idea at the time. Fifteen years later, it is becoming mainstream medical knowledge. So, and the reason why I'm saying this is I really want you to understand the amazing, amazing opportunity that you have here with Revita Blue. This is a product that is a discovery. If you talk to people about stem cells out there in the marketplace, most people will not know what we'll be talking about today. So it is truly novel, and yet it is 15 years in the work of proving and testing. So it's a time-tested concept that is novel, and it's brought to the marketplace by one of the strongest companies on the planet. I mean, is that an opportunity or what? This is, this is what you have. <clears throat> So let's talk about it. Let's talk about what we have here. So whenever you talk about stem cells, you hear about stem cells, you read about stem cells in magazines, uh, in the news, uh, on the internet, we oftentimes talk about cells that are isolated from a source. It can be your bone marrow, it can be the blood, it can be fat tissue. Then they are manipulated in the lab and then they are injected into your body. The thing that we never talk about is that as you're sitting right now, stem cells are in your blood. They are in your bone marrow. They are in your fat tissue. So if stem cells have such a potential for tissue repair, then what are they doing in your body? What is the role of your stem cells as you're sitting here from the day you're born until the day you die? What do they do? And when we understand what stem cells are doing in the body, it literally changes the way that we, that we see health and wellness. And that's what I want to show you today. So here's what stem cells are doing in the body. What I'm going to show here, I'm backing it up with a few studies that I've selected to show this, this whole concept. But understand, there are hundreds, if not thousands of studies behind this concept. So anytime there is an injury or a problem into a tissue, uh, or an organ. And a lot of these studies were done with heart attack, with stroke, bone fractures. I'm not telling, telling you here that we're with Re Revita Blue, we're going to deal with stroke or heart attack or bro broken bones. That's not the point. I'm kind of describing what you can find in the scientific literature. Here's what's happening. The day that you have an injury, within five, six, seven, eight hours, there are compounds that are being released by the affected tissue. Compounds like granulocyte colony stimulating factor. Don't learn this, this word. It's not in the test at the end of the day. It's just for you to understand these compounds have been identified. They reach the bone marrow and then they trigger the release of stem cells from the bone marrow. 
within two, three days after the injury, the number of stem cells start to increase in the bloodstream and will reach anywhere between three to ten times the baseline level of stem cells. Now, when stem cells circulate everywhere in your body, they don't know where to go. They don't know which is the tissue that is in need of repair. So oftentimes, that's why after a few days after a heart attack, people start to hear voices. It's the stem cells saying, where do I go? No, it's not true. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure you were listening. So stem cells circulate everywhere. They don't know where to go. So their way to find what is the affected tissue that is in need of repair is that after a few days, the affected tissue will start to release another compound locally in the area where the tissue is affected. So when stem cells circulate everywhere in the body, when they go into the fine capillaries of the affected tissue, that compound is secreted locally, it touches, it connects with the stem cells, and then it triggers the whole process of migration of the stem cells out of the blood into the tissue. When stem cells start to migrate out of the blood into the tissue, in the tissue they will start to crawl literally to the site of the injury, and when they get into contact with cellular debris of that tissue, they will start to proliferate and transform into cells of that tissue. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. This is your natural repair and re renewal system. From the day you are born, when something needs to be handled in your body, stem cells do it. So in this whole process, we have the release of stem cells from the bone marrow, we have the circulation of stem cells, migration, proliferation, and differentiation. These are the obvious steps that stem cells must go through in your body to accomplish what we just talked about. But of all of these, the one that has been the most studied is the release of stem cells for the bone, from the bone marrow. For no other reason that in medical science, you can only study things for which you have a tool. You can only study planets when you've got a telescope. And you can only study micro, uh, bacteria when you've got a microscope. So we have molecules known to trigger the release of stem cells from the bone marrow. And the consequence of this is that you've got more stem cells in circulation. So let's look at the scientific literature. What do we know about the link between how many stem cells you have in your blood and the ability of the body to be healthy? Now I'm going to use here a number of studies that you can find in the medical and scientific literature. What I want to make clear before I go into this is that in medical science, we never study health. If you take a healthy person and you give that person white rice for one year, and after one year that person is still healthy, you cannot say white rice is good for health because that person is still healthy. You cannot study health. It's difficult. So, oftentimes we study disease. You take a problem and you see if something can improve the problem. So, these are the studies that we need to look at to understand the role of stem cells in the body. My aim here is not to show you or suggest that Revita Blue will have an effect on diseases. That's not the point. Let's look at what we know between the link of stem cells, how many stem cells we have in the bloodstream and health. So, this is a study in which scientists took 500 individuals at risk for cardiovascular problems. So people with high blood pressure, uh, high cholesterol, diabetes, obesity, high stress level, those kinds of risk factors for cardiovascular disease. And then they counted the number of stem cells in the bloodstream of these individuals. Just like we can count red blood cells and the number of red blood cells that we have, uh, we know that we have a healthy range. If you're below the healthy range, we will say you are anemic. In the same way, we have a certain number of stem cells. The only difference is that to this day, there is no healthy range for stem cells that has been established. We just have different levels of stem cells. So they counted the number of stem cells in the blood of these people, and then for one year, they observed the occurrence of any kind of heart problem heart attack, angina, arrhythmia, whatever the problem. So what you've got here in that graph, anytime you see a line that goes down, oops, sorry. Anytime you see a line that goes down, this is a person experiencing heart problem. So they separate these people in three groups. First group with a lot of stem cells in their bloodstream, average number of stem cells in their bloodstream, and low level of stem cells in their bloodstream. It's pretty obvious that the group of people with fewer stem cells experience way more cardiovascular problem. 
the conclusion of that study is that the number of circulating stem cells was the best predictor of cardiovascular health. More stem cells in circulation means that more stem cells are available to participate to the very normal process of tissue repair. So that if you have risk factor, but you simply naturally help the tissue to repair itself, well, the problem just doesn't show up. It's really that simple. Same kind of things were shown with not just the heart, other aspects of human health. Now, once this was documented in the scientific literature, it obviously begged the question, if there's such a link between the number of stem cells in the bloodstream and the ability of the body to repair itself, what if we were able to increase the number of stem cells in circulation? Could we change the course of the development of different kinds of health problems? So again, I'm going to show some studies with diseases. My point here is not to talk about diseases. It's simply to show that stem cells in your bone marrow do have the ability to help the body repair itself. Okay, first study was published or was done by the National Institute of Health in America. So it's a very prestigious research organization. So the team of scientists took mice and they stopped the blood flow to the heart so they triggered a heart attack. Then they let the animal recover and the control group, nothing was done to it. The experimental group, they simply injected cytokines like granulocyte colony stimulating factor, the kind of molecules that the body normally secretes when there's an injury to call for stem cells. So the only difference between the two groups, nothing was done to the group, the control group. The experimental group had, let's say, 10 to 100 times more stem cells in circulation. When they looked at these animals 27 days later, in the control group, we can see severe scar tissue in the ventricular wall, no new blood vessels, 17% survival, and fairly poor cardiovascular health. In the group that had more stem cells, we have complete renewal of the ventricular wall, functional new blood vessels tapping in the other ventricles, 73% survival, and quasi-normalized cardiovascular function. I am not telling you we have found a way to cure the consequence of a heart attack. I'm just showing you because this protocol as used here for reasons that will be beyond this presentation cannot be used in humans. But it shows one thing that is to me amazing. It shows that if you can really put more stem cells in circulation, the body does have the ability of using these extra stem cells to put them to good use to repair damaged tissues in the heart. That's not the only studies. Many studies have documented that same thing in the heart. Here's one other example with diabetes. To show that this whole process also works for diabetes. And again, I just want to be clear. I'm using diseases studies because I have no other choice. You need to use that to document these phenomenon. So to show that we can repair the pancreas by simply using our own stem cells, we need to show two things. We need to show that stem cells from the bone marrow naturally, without doing anything, can leave the bone marrow, travel to the pancreas, and become normal insulin-producing cells in the pancreas. If we can show that this is a natural process of the body, then the next step is by putting more stem cells in circulation, can I enhance this natural process to a point where it could have an effect on the health of the pancreas. Is that fine? Good enough? Okay. First study, very, very well-designed study. Scientists took male mice and they did a, a genetic manipulation. So when this male mouse is an embryonic stem cell, so one cell, they go and they connect the gene for insulin to the gene that codes for green fluorescent protein. So if a cell in that, and then the animal develop, so now you have the full mouse, and if one cell in that mouse starts to make insulin, it is also going to make green fluorescent protein, so it will turn green. So you can see it, it's green. No other cells in your body is green. Even on St. Patrick's Day. Now they took female mice, they irradiated the female mice, which kills all the stem cells in their bone marrow, and they injected male stem cells into the female mice. So what do we have? We have female mice whose bone marrow is now made with stem cells that have the Y chromosome because it came from 
a male mouse, so I can, I can identify it. And if any one of these cells start to make insulin, it will turn green. So they isolated cells from the pancreas a few weeks later. And if you look at that cell, you use a fluorescent green light, it has started to, to, to transcribe. They are from the pancreas, by the way. So they left the bone marrow, migrated to the pancreas, and now in the pancreas, I have these cells that have started to transcribe the gene for insulin. But do they really make insulin? Using an antibody for insulin with a red marker, they do make insulin, or it does make insulin. And the beautiful thing here is that it's not a Frankenstein cell that is overproducing or underproducing. It's right in between the other two cells. It is just a normal cell of the pancreas. And my message today, as you'll see as we move along, is that this, what we see here, is actually what is happening in every single one of you. We lose cells every day, we replace them. At the age that we all have in this room, there's not one single cell in your pancreas that you're born with. You've all lost them. They've all been replaced by stem cells from the bone marrow. This is just a very natural process, and it contains the Y chromosome, so it is a stem cell that comes from the bone marrow. So the conclusion of that study is very clear. Stem cells from the bone marrow can, on their own, naturally leave the bone marrow, go to the pancreas, migrate in the pancreas, and become natural insulin-producing cells. So far, so good? Very good crowd. They told me Jeunesse people are smart, but I didn't realize it was that smart. <laughs> good end for you. <laughs> okay, next study. If I increase the number of stem cells in circulation, can I really change the function of the pancreas? So this is an islet of Langerhans. It is the unit in the pancreas that is making insulin. Now, when we do animal studies, you may know this, or maybe you've never thought about it, but to find a mouse that has Parkinson, you won't find a mouse that has Parkinson. You won't find a mouse that has Alzheimer's. A mouse that has forgotten what is a cat, you won't find one. You won't find a mouse with multiple sclerosis. You won't find a mouse with diabetes. In order to study diseases in animals, you need to find a way to generate the problem that is identical or similar to what we have in humans, and then you find a way to resolve it. So you put aluminum on the, on the brain of a mouse, and it will develop something that resembles Alzheimer's, for example. And then you start to resolve the problem. With diabetes, there's a toxin, a bacterial toxin called streptocytosin. When you inject, it in the, inject, inject that toxin in a mouse, within 24 to 48 hours, those islets of Langerhans look like this. These animals now are fully diabetic. They cannot make insulin. So now next study or next group, they took a, a, a group of rats in which they injected streptocytosin, but also did endogenous stem cell mobilization. They released the animal's own stem cells. And you can see that you got a partial reconstitution of these islets of Langerhans, but it was enough to produce enough insulin. These animals have been normalized. The same study was done in humans, 14 individuals recently diagnosed for insulin-dependent diabetes. They did two rounds of release of their own stem cells. Of those 14, 13 were independent from insulin between 3 to 36 months. And at the end of 36 months, they stopped the study. Many of them were still fine. I am not telling you we've discovered a treatment for diabetes. That's not the point. The point is to, when I say that stem cells from the bone marrow, re, from your bone marrow, from your blood, really has the potential to help repair your body, that's the data that is behind that very, very simple claim. Good? <clears throat> okay. Okay. Now, when we talk about health in the whole wide world of health and wellness, it's not necessarily expressed that way, but if you think about it, we normally, traditionally, see health as um, something where at, let's say, 20, 25 years old, you reach peak health, and from then on, it's kind of a slow decline. You know, you reach 30, 35, and then little aches and pains are starting to show up. And then, so it's like, you're, if I make an analogy, it's like you're born with a bank account, with a set amount of money in your bank account, and we tell you, spend it wisely, but there's a point where you start to lack money. But stem cell research has revealed that that is not what health is doing in the body. Health is actually a balance between two phenomena. Every day of our lives, we lose cells. Every day of our lives, we replace them. 
between now and next month or between now and last month, nothing has changed in your health. It looks like everything has been stable. But during that month, you have lost a lot of cells and you have replaced them. There's a dynamic process that is taking place in your body every day. If I take the analogy of the bank account, it's not that you're born with a set amount of money. It's that all your life, you need to have enough money to match up your expenses. If you have an income that matches your expenses, you're balanced, you're fine. The problem is if one day you start to lose more cells than you can replace or renew your tissue, then you start to lose ground and then problems start to show up. And if you can increase the ability to renew tissue, then you can help the body slowly help uh, to, go to, to, to be healthier, to, to function more normally. So if I make the analogy here of the bank account, it would be like telling you, when you go bankrupt, is it because you've lost your money? Intuitively, you might say, yeah, it's because I've lost my money. But most, most of the time, it's because you've lost your income. It's the income that is the problem. And the issue with that curve here is that as we age, the problem is that the balance shifts. As you reach 25, 30 years old, slowly the red marrow in your bone marrow shift to yellow marrow and you make fewer and fewer stem cells. The number of stem cells that you have in your bloodstream goes down as you age so that balance is lost. So slowly you express more and more problems. So with all of this curve, the question is, what if we could, as we age, bring back that balance? Then you basically allow the body to just age much more healthily. You can, help, you can tap into the natural ability of the body to remain healthy during the entire life of an individual. You won't become immortal. You're not going to live for 120 years. But whatever years that you have, you just have a greater quality of life. And that's the whole idea behind this. There's another interesting conclusion to draw from this. And I'll get a little bit more philosophical here, but how do we define in our modern society health? If you think about it, we define health as the absence of disease. And it's ridiculous. If, I, if, if you go and see your doctor and you say, I don't feel very well, and he does a bunch of tests, and at the end, he cannot put a label on you, a diagnosis. Then he's going to say, no, you're fine. You'll say, but I'm not fine. I don't feel well. No, you're fine. How many of us live our life, and we don't sleep like we used to? Our memory is not as good as it used to. There's a little bit more pain in the morning. The air color has shifted a little bit toward the lighter part. We don't have the same health that we used to have, and we get used to it. We think that this is normal aging. We think that not being able to do everything that we want to do is just normal. What all of this information is telling us is that, no, your body has the ability to really reach its optimal health. All you have to do is support this natural aspect of the body and put more stem cells in circulation. If all of this is true, there is one way to look at it. And this is an article that I published about five years ago in which, as we were talking about all this process, uh, to prove that this is true, statistically, we can ask this question. If there is such a link between the number of stem cells in circulation and the ability of staying healthy, it means that people who have stayed healthy statistically should have more stem cells in their bloodstream. And people who have lost their health should have fewer stem cells. And now today, there's about 50 studies or so in the scientific literature that have looked at that. Taking people that have developed various kinds of degenerative problems, counting the number of stem cells in their bloodstream, and the outcome is that you've got about half the number of stem cells in the bloodstream of people who have developed various kinds of health problems. There's a direct relationship between how many stem cells you've got in your blood and the ability of your body to really regain its optimal health. And to me, that is the key message. The key message is whatever the problem is, it's not so much about the problem, it's about giving back to your body its natural ability to express its optimal health. So, with all of this being said, what can we do to put more stem cells in circulation? Interesting question, right? Exercise. Strong exercise, not a walk in the park. We're talking about running a marathon, intense rowing, and I believe that it's just the intense exercise that leads to micro lesions and muscles, tendon, ligaments that essentially trigger the repair process so it increases the number of stem cells in circulation. Sleep, deep sleep, 
when you are in deep REM sleep, you secrete melatonin that supports the migration and proliferation of stem cells in the brain. Anti-inflammatory food, inflammation in your or reserve. Systemic inflammation in your body creates noise that reduces the ability of stem cells to be able to identify which tissue in your body is in need of repair. Fasting. We've all heard about how fasting is good for health, but we've never really scientifically understood why. One of the explanations is that after three days of fasting, you significantly increase the number of stem cells in circulation. We know that stress is not good for health, but why? Yes, it increases blood pressure, it does a lot of things, but one thing that we have discovered is that stress hormones from the adrenal glands, cortisol, when it's in your bloodstream, will suppress the ability of stem cells to migrate into tissues and proliferate. So you live in New York, Los Angeles, Tokyo, and so you have a lot of stress. I understand in, in Kuala Lumpur there's not much stress, but you live in places with a lot of stress. <clears throat> Sometimes for one, two, three, four, five decades. Well, during all that time, your ability to repair and maintain your health, compensate for the natural cell loss, um, loss of cells, then is reduced. So obviously, there's a link between stress and a lot of different kinds of health problems. Cigarette smoking. For the smoker and people around you, it's the same effect. It suppresses the ability of stem cells to migrate in tissue and proliferate. So, if you run a marathon every day, if you sleep very, very well, you eat a lot of antioxidant food, you're vegetarian, you fast three times, three days per week, you control st stress and you're not exposed to cigarette smoking, you may not be interested in what I'm going to say now. But if you don't do all these things, then in the past 15 years, my main focus of research was to study plants that have been documented to support the natural release of stem cells from the bone marrow. The first one is a blue-green algae called Afanizomenon flus aqua. Within one hour of consumption, we can see an increase of about 30% in the number of circulating stem cells. So all this adventure, all my studies and my research on stem cells started with the discovery of how this plant was working in the body. From there, the question that I asked was, what else is known in the world in local pharmacopoeias in different parts of the world known to be associated to a broad variety of health benefits. And the thinking process behind this is that if a plant supports the release of your own stem cells, they will migrate in the liver of a person who will then experience better liver function. In the pancreas of somebody else who will have better glucose metabolism. In the brain of somebody else, the joint of somebody else, the lung of somebody else. So we should see a broad variety of health benefits. And they are some of these ingredients on our planet have been historically associated with these kinds of benefits. And one of them is sea buckthorn berry. You know sea buckthorn berry? It's been used for centuries in Tibetan medicine, Mongolian medicine, uh, Chinese medicine. What is interesting about this fruit, and I, I, it's one of the things that I found so attractive and fascinating, is that whenever you name a plant in science, most of the time it's named according to its physical characteristics. So you take, for example, AFA that we talked about just before, Aphanizomenon flasacqua means invisible flower of water. Beautiful, isn't it? But there are a few plants that have been named not on the basis of their physical characteristics, but on the basis of what they do to the body. Very rare, but Hippophae rhamnoides, Cibocton is one of them. Hippophae means Hippo is horse, phi is like. It means shining horse. It's Alexander the Great, as he was going through his conquest in Asia. At some point, he abandoned a herd of wounded horses in a field of sea buckthorn. And when he came back a few weeks later, he had a herd of vibrant, healthy horses with a shiny coat. And a shiny coat in a horse means a healthy coat. So he brought sea buckthorn back to Greece. And now it's spread to Europe, to uh, Europe, Europe, Europe through all this part of the world. And now it has integrated many, many local medicine. So we developed a very specific extract of seabuckthorn berry. And when we feed this extract, we provide this extract to individuals. All these studies were done in humans. 
it leads to an increase in the number of circulating stem cells, but after two hours, it is still climbing. So it's an effect that is much more robust than what we originally had with AFA. Now, the next ingredient in uh, Revita Blue is another ingredient that I worked on. Uh, it's a specific species, unique species of aloe coming from Madagascar. Uh, the problem with this type of aloe is that the supply is very small and not sufficient to satisfy a company like Jeunesse. We count on you to bring this product to all the 140 countries, if not more, and to talk to everybody in there. I see Jeunesse with this product double within the next few years. Would that be nice? So, <laughs> so we won't have enough of that aloe to satisfy that. So as we tested, or as I tested, various types of aloe, we find one other type of aloe that had the same effect. It's a specific extract of aloe, and when we give that to individuals, we see likewise an increase in the number of circulating stem cells that last over time. Now, over the 15 years of study, there's one thing that I have observed is that releasing stem cells is great, but it's not, you don't get the best just by releasing stem cells. If you can support their migration into tissues, then you get even better results. So you make them leave the bone marrow and you facilitate the process of migration into tissues. So one ingredient that does that is beta-glucan. So about half an hour after consumption of beta-glucan, you see a drop in the number of circulating stem cells because we enhance the ability of stem cells to listen to the tissues that are affected. So by better listening to these tissues, when the stem cells circulate in the fine capillaries, it's called to the tissue and it migrates more easily. So these are the, f the uh, four key ingredients that we have in Revita Blue. So you will see with all of these, the nice synergy. So we are getting now into clinical trials to study specifically the synergy, but you've got four ingredients Three, that stimulates the release or support the release of stem cells from the bone marrow through various mechanisms of action, and one that supports their migration into tissue. So to show you a little bit more about these ingredients, here's a short video. Sourced from the Tibetan Plateau and the crisp waters of Oregon's Upper Klamath Lake, Jeunesse has developed a patent-pending formula enhanced with blue-green algae. See buckthorn berry aloe vera, and coconut water. This botanical beverage mix is designed to help nourish and support your body. Introducing Revita Blue, formulated by a pioneer in stem cell research. Refreshing Revita Blue contains three legendary plant-based ingredients. Blue-green algae, also known as AFA, a phanazomenon floss aquae, is found and extracted from Oregon's pristine Upper Klamath Lake. Blue-green algae is world-renowned as one of the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet. Harvested from the Tibetan Plateau, sea buckthorn berry is packed with antioxidants and has been used for centuries in Chinese, Mongolian, and Tibetan traditional medicine for longevity and vibrant health. Grown in tropical climates around the globe, Aloe vera has been used for almost 6,000 years for its wellness benefits. Taken daily, there is no question Revita Blue will be the go-to product for your life and lifestyle. Revita Blue, your best you. I love this slogan because once you understand really everything that we've talked about with stem cells, and that you've got a product that supports this natural process in the body, that's exactly what Revita Blue does, your best you. It gives your body the potential to become the best that it can be. So the claims with the product are very simple. It supports this natural repair process in the body, renewal system. Uh, it has some side benefits on supporting immune function, providing antioxidant protection. It supports a general sense of well-being once your body is better able to maintain itself. Uh, and it supports uh, healthy aging. Now, of all of this, there's something for me that I find absolutely mind-boggling, is that 
There are a lot of companies out there that would have been interested in a product like Revitablu. But when I started to look at the products that you have in the Jeunesse line of product, it is mind-boggling how this new product fits into this line of product just like a glove. There is an amazing synergy between these different products. And let me mention just a few of them. What is the main mechanism of action of Luminesce? Luminesce contains specific peptides, it does other things, but contains specific peptides that when you apply these on the skin, what it will do is that it will attract the stem cells that are in the circulation and make them incorporate the stem cell of the skin and then other peptides that will support the proliferation of these stem cells to then become the skin cells that will rebuild, rejuvenate and just maintain your skin. That's one of the mechanisms of action behind Luminesce. Now, what happens if you have more stem cells in circulation and the same product can bring to the skin more of these regenerative cells? You suddenly potentiate the effect of Luminesce. So by connecting these two products, and then there's another product in the picture, is that if you give then as building blocks, the building blocks that will allow these new cells to better repair the skin, you've got a powerful trio to help the skin rejuvenate. So try these two together. You take Revita Blue, continue to use Luminesce, and, uh, and then you will see the difference as time goes by. Another big one is Reserve. I mentioned it briefly before, but the ability of stem cells to be able to see what tissue is in need of repair. It's a little bit like if there's a, a light music that is playing in the background and I'm telling you, follow where that music is. This is the stem cells trying to find where the, 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 the damaged tissue is in your body. And then I put a lot of noise out there. It's very difficult to find where it is. Inflammation and oxidative stress into your bloodstream is noise for your stem cells. So if you can reduce this, you facilitate uh, the ability of your stem cells to find where they need to go. So resveratrol will assist the ability of stem cells to find where to go. Aside from what Donna talked a little bit before, is that it affects certain genes that will do two things. It will support the ability of stem cells to migrate into tissue aside from its antioxidant properties and also help the population of stem cells in the bone marrow to better maintain itself as well. So now when you start to couple these together, then you're getting an amazing synergy. So as we go forward and we experiment more and more uh, with the synergy between uh, the other uh, Jeunesse product and Revita Blue, uh, we'll be able to talk more about it, but I think it's going to be a fabulous synergy. So that's what I wanted to share with you. I hope that it was enough for you to understand that you've got a life-changing synergy and opportunity. Thank you.